Hi, my name is Elisha Goldstein. I am the founder of the Mindful Living Collective and also the creator of 21 Days to Overcome Anxiety Naturally. And I want to talk to you a little bit about self-awareness and why that actually matters, you know, really what it is, how we can cultivate it, and how it can make a big impact in your life right now. Um, you know, every day we're moving around, um, we grow up, we we learn how to repeat, repeat certain physical procedures like taking food and putting it to our mouth, to relating to people on a daily basis, our relationships, the people that we love, to the work that we do, to the way that we exercise, um, the way that we sleep, and, and more. And our brain memorizes certain procedures and makes them automatic. Now that's not so much a problem. Sometimes that's really good because as our brain makes things automatic, we can handle more and more complex tasks. But what if our brain makes things like anxiety automatic? Or what if it makes things like depression automatic? Or what if it makes things like uh, fixing your belief in what you're actually able to do uh, automatic? What if it holds you back in life in some way automatically? And so self-awareness allows us to wake up from that, step into what Viktor Frankl, who was a Holocaust survivor and a neurologist and psychiatrist, who said, between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space lies our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Mindfulness or awareness or self-awareness, mindfulness of ourselves, helps us uh, step into that space and widen that space so we're more aware of the choices and have a greater sense of perspective of what's in front of us. Why is that, why is that important? Well, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, roughly, roughly in general, one in 12 Americans say they have um, the symptoms of uh, anxiety disorder. That was in 2019 and prior. Here we are in 2020, let's say, and if you're watching this many years from now, this is according to 2020, is uh, now, now we're seeing that uh, that has changed to one in three. That's a dramatic difference. So what happened? We're operating automatically, paying attention to the headlines, the most, the most blaring headlines, paying attention to our own worries that are just kind of happening automatically, and we're developing these anxiety disorders. So this is what I call an anxious loop. So what this is what's important about this with self-awareness, we can recognize that our nervous system is getting kicked up. We can recognize when we're caught in certain habits of eating or maybe lack of exercise, things that could be really helpful for us. And, uh, and then we can begin to wake up to that, step into that space between stimulus and response and say, aha, I got here. How did I get here? What kind of drew me off track? And invite ourselves to begin again. The more and more we practice self-awareness, the, be the beauty of it is the um, the stronger we the stronger we get with it. And I'll give you an example of something really personal to my life. Um, for years, and this may sound kind of silly, but if you know if you know me, um, or if you don't know me, this now you're gonna know. Uh, all in, my, in all the programs I've ever written, and all the books I've ever written, um, what's really important is this thread of play. Why is play actually important to bring into our lives? So maybe with an awareness, we can look at it and say, yeah, where is the play in my life? Because play not only creates resiliency and actually has positive, um, can make a positive impact to our brain, and not only is it fun and can, and can um, help us be happier, but um, play helps us actually learn more um, and more effectively. So for years, I've been kind of, uh, I was playing guitar off and on in my life. Um, and, uh, and it was only recently, I had, just had not been playing for many, many years. I have three young boys, life is busy, you know, in that way. And I've always told myself the story that like, God, who has time to play, you know, the guitar? I don't have time to play the guitar. And so uh, all of a sudden, one day I kind of woke up. I stepped into that space between stimulus and response. And told my and looked into the future and said, my kids are going to be grown, you know, and out of the house in some years. And if I don't give them the gift of music in my house, this is for me personally, everyone has their own stuff. I'm going to look back and I'm going to regret that. And, and so I was in that space between stimulus and response. In that space, I made a choice. I could see that I had a choice that I could play at certain times. And, um, and my kids were a little older now, so they'd allow me to play maybe or something that I could, pl I could play with it and see what happens. Who knows? 
And so and so I did. Now I've been kind of playing more and, and all of a sudden my five year old is picking up guitar and playing and like this is the inspiration that happens. All it took is, is, is stepping into that space between stimulus and response. Now for you, that might be you get caught in certain anxious reactions. You feel overwhelmed and stressed. We all do. And or you get caught in negative thinking or self-critical thinking. Um, or you get caught in your hand way too down, way too deep down the bag of potato chips, or too deep down the the uh, ice cream jar, you know, too often, or or the bottle, you know, a little too often. Or there's some kind of bad habits we might get caught in: mental bad habits or behavioral bad habits. Self awareness is again, it's like a muscle. We can build it. It's just in our brain. Practice and repetition makes us stronger. So when we practice self awareness which I'm going to give you a very simple exercise to do in a moment to do that. Um, and we do with some level of practice and repetition, we can actually get stronger in it. So here's a very, very simple practice to begin self-awareness. We know all the benefits. We've talked about it. And so here's something very simple. So this is a practice you may have heard of before. And if you haven't, it's a beautiful practice to bring into your life. Very simple to implement. It takes almost, it takes very little time. You can do it in a minute. You can do it in 10 minutes. It's up to you. It's the acronym STOP. So what is that? S stands for STOP. T stands for TAKE A DEEP BREATH. <sighs> or as many deep breaths as you need. O stands for OBSERVE. This is kind of doing a mindful check-in. In any given moment, there's three things happening in a triangle. There's thoughts, emotions, energy and motion and sensations, the sensations of your body. So you just check in. How's my body feeling right now? Am I tense? Is there holding? If you're feeling anxious or overwhelmed, 100% you're tensing somewhere in your body. They're just connected. And so what you need to do is take a deep breath and begin to, with that awareness, soften your body or maybe stretch it out a little bit. Open it up. Send the signals to your brain, the opposite signals of anxiety or stuckness or rigidity. Create some flexibility there. And and then we kind of and then we kind of loosen it and soften it. Then we ask ourselves, how am I feeling emotionally? Emotions are the greatest decider in your brain to how you're gonna perceive and what you're gonna pay attention to. All the marketing companies in the world know this and they spend billions of dollars on this to try and get you to feel something so you'll pay attention to their stuff. And so you are doing some internal marketing here. You're realizing that your emotional state might influence your perception and how you interpret things in the next moment, whether it's an interaction with your friend or your kids or somebody that, that's there, um, or how you're perceiving yourself or being self-critical towards yourself. Your emotions have everything to do with how you're interpreting your own life and the, and the life around you. So it's good to know how you're feeling emotionally. I guarantee you, if you're feeling like well and happy, you're gonna interpret a situation very differently than if you're feeling anxious and depressed. So same exact event, different interpretation based on how you're feeling. So it's really important to notice how we're feeling. So here we are, we notice how we're feeling physically, noticing how we're feeling emotionally, maybe noticing we're feeling comfortable or uncomfortable or imbalanced in some way. Maybe there's some sadness there or some anxiousness there, or some restlessness there. Bring this self-awareness to our emotional life, our physical life, our emotional life. Take a deep breath, we notice it. And then we ask ourselves a question, what's the quality of my attention right now? Does my mind seem really busy and distracted? Or does it seem like it's able to attend to being here right now? Either way, you're actually present when you're asking that question. And so there it is, there's the O, sensations in the body. And you're doing this, take your time with it. Emotions, how am I feeling emotionally? You're naming it. Because you know that if you can name it, you know, then you can kind of work with what's there, you know what's there. It's easier to kind of cool it down. Studies show that actually when you name something, you bring more blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, especially naming emotions. And that's what's involved with impulse control, emotion regulation, perspective, you know, all of that. So we want to do that. So we're naming it and we're naming the quality of our attention. Then we're asking ourselves the question, what's most important for me to pay attention to right now? Because now what we've done is we've gotten to that space between stimulus and response. And now we've widened it through this process. So we have greater perspective, we're a greater sense of the choices that are there. And so now it's a good time to dip in and ask the question, what's most important for me to pay attention to right now? Geez, you know, I've been so overwhelmed and stressed. Maybe, maybe what I need is just to go outside and take a walk and take a break. I didn't even realize how thirsty I was. I need to go get myself a glass of water. Believe me, I have plenty of clients who they 
people I've worked with who who will work a whole day without drinking a glass of water because they're just in that autopilot. So uh, harmful. And so um, and so or maybe I just need to go outside and get some sunshine and splash on my face or maybe I need to stretch. Or maybe I need to call a friend or maybe what I need is to sit down in meditation or do a little yoga or whatever it might be. Right. You're so much more aware. You have so much more opportunity to take that next action that's going to be supportive to you. What's most important for me to focus on? Or what do I need right now? Two guiding questions that you dip into that space between stimulus and response and see what comes up from that and then take the action from that. It's only with self-awareness that you can actually harness the ability to live the life you want to live, to choose the life you want to live. If you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, or anything like that, this is the key self-awareness of is really where it, begin, where it begins. So here's the question for you. How do you want to live? What's present for you right now? How do you want to live? What's your intention? Start by getting creating some intentions for how you want to live and start paying attention to it. You will fall off the wagon. Just like if you're doing a meditation practice, your mind will wander. In life, you'll have an intention. You will fall off the wagon. The question is, you, can you forgive yourself for that? Investigate. Why? What happened? Invite yourself to begin again and again and again and again. So you keep, keep coming back to our intention, paying attention to our intention, eating, exercise, uh, meditation, connecting with people, play, all of that. Those are our intentions. We're, we're getting clear on those. And now we're starting to pay attention to it. So starts by strengthening awareness. It's a muscle. You just get stronger as you as you just practice it over and over again. Practice with that stop practice you know, over and over again. Um, and, and know that you can choose in this way how you want to relate to life itself. Inevitably choosing the life you want to live.